What is a psychopath? The word psychopath is often misunderstood. First of all, it's no different from sociopath. Psychopath, sociopath are the same thing. Now, there are some academics who split hairs and, and believe that when they use one word, they mean one thing, and when they use the other, they mean something else. But in general, as far as we're concerned, same thing. But it's very different from psychotic. A psychotic is a person who is suffering from schizophrenia or some forms of manic depressive disorder or some other uh, impaired thinking, and they don't know the difference between what is real and what is a fantasy. They, they, the part of the brain that helps us know automatically what is real and what isn't, a psychotic has trouble distinguishing. That part of their brain is off. A psychopath doesn't have a conscience. Uh, not everybody knows what a superego is. It's that part of our mind that probably forms around age five or six. Because before that, we, we don't have a sense of what's right and wrong. Uh, we certainly don't have an enduring mental ability to feel guilty or to identify ourselves with someone that we respect and want to be like a good person. It's all about being good and feeling good about being good. So a normal person has that ability and when they sin or they make mistakes that hurt people, they feel guilty or embarrassed. A psychopath doesn't have that feeling at all. There are a lot of studies that are done on psychopaths, and there's no one part of the brain that is impaired. Some people believe that psychopaths have a much higher threshold for physical pain. That seems to be borne out by experience. That may make them harder to discipline and harder to learn right from wrong as a child. Uh, psychopaths seem to respond automatically uh, to charged words in a way that's no different from responding to normal words. They, they, they don't get upset and excited by uh, seeing the pain of others unless they're sadists. And let me come to that in a second. The important thing to recognize about the term psychopathy and the word psychopath is that people exist who are different from us. Now, maybe there's a psychopath watching this, but I'm talking to the non-psychopaths. People exist who are different from us. And because they look like us, and we may be the kind of person who is in general giving and forgiving and loving, we may not believe that you can be without a conscience. You can. And it's potentially deadly to go through life ignorant of the fact that these people exist. The best book on the subject, just for the layperson, is called Without Conscience, and it's by Robert Hare, H-A-R-E, psychologist from Canada. Very, very good book in very clear language that explains what I'm saying. So how do you get to become a psychopath? We don't know for sure. There's a certain part that is inherited. You, you lack some of the building blocks that it takes to form a conscience through normal child raising. Some of it may have to do with being raised in an abnormal way. So although you have the potential to develop a conscience by age five or six, you were raised with brutal parents or negligent parents or under certain circumstances and you never put it all together. I don't think it's primarily the parents fault because you study psychopaths like one of the 18-year-olds uh, responsible for Columbine, I believe Eric Harris was a psychopath, had a brother who served honorably in the military, had parents 
who don't appear to have anything whatsoever wrong with them. It's not their doing. I believe in that case it's largely something in the way the genes created the structures of the mind. At any rate, that happens. You don't call someone a psychopath until they've given a lot of evidence and they've grown up. Uh, children who develop into psychopaths often were fire setters, they tortured animals, they were very disobedient, they didn't form loyal relationships. And then after age 18, when they're in the adult range, they have a series of behaviors that can be observed. We don't have the term psychopath in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual, so it's not really a psychiatric diagnosis. We have a personality disorder called antisocial personality disorder, and that overlaps with psychopath quite a bit. But the concept of psychopathy is out there. There are books written about it. Uh, it's worth knowing about. And if you cross paths with a psychopath, or you're married to one, or you have one as a brother or a sister, it's going to be a hard life for you. These people don't care about you. If they're smart, they know how to fake caring. And they get very good at it. Because like any mammal, they have needs. They have needs for food, for money, for sex, sometimes for prestige. And they do it by exploiting people. Now, some psychopaths become sadists. Uh, being sadistic means you enjoy hurting another person. Not every psychopath becomes a sadist, but if they stumble into sadism, they have absolutely no regret, no empathy, no remorse as a product of their being a psychopath. And they practice, and they get better. And the worst are the serial killers, who are not only psychopaths, and sadists, uh, but they've learned to enjoy their own form of grandiosity. They're narcissists. They care about themselves. They want to outwit the police. They want to humiliate logical, decent people. They hold us in contempt. They're, they're the worst of bad. And like some of my colleagues, I am reluctant to use the word evil because it conjures up something in the spiritual realm. But it is a word in the English language, and I think it applies to the sadistic psychopath. So it's real. We shouldn't be naive about it. If we have a psychopath in the family, we need to protect ourselves and others, and there's very little that we can do. I think the best remedy is to have these people age in isolation. Uh, I, for one, favor having a special facility for psychopaths who've committed murder so that regardless of their sentence, they're allowed to age in isolation. I, I would have post-sentencing commitment for psychopaths, not to mental hospitals, but to a facility that we've yet to design. Uh, I, don't, I don't know many psychopaths. I've, I've not chosen to study them. Uh, but I have been asked to review texts about the psychopath. And because I care about victims, I feel it's important for people who've been victimized to understand this concept and to be on guard.